welcome back to the Digital Lounge Talks here in the beautiful garden of the Seeburg Castle. I'm speaking today with Vito Kapi. He's the CIO of Bühler. And they have started their transformation journey quite some time ago. I know that you are one of the earliest SAP customers. So maybe give us a little bit of an insight into what you've done recently and where you're at right, right now. Thanks for having me. Beautiful place here. Um, so tra there are many transformations, but I guess you talk about the s hana transformation. And yes, you're right, we are a very old um, SAP customer. I mean, our journey with SAP started back in 1978. So I was exactly one year old at that time. <laughs> so Arthur Platner was there himself, yes. I imagine. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I mean, I, at the very beginning, <laughs> only in Utsvi, we started with a little bit um, um, procurement topics because we wanted to digitalize it. I mean, not. I, but the people who were there at that time, Hans Platner was there. And that was the starting point of um, the relationship between SAP and Bühler. And I mean, afterwards, it was already one year later, we switched from R R1 oh, to wow. R2. <laughs> so that was in 79. And in 98, there was another transformation. We um, switched from R2 to R3. It just was like a, a greenfield approach. And there I was already somewhere in the scenery. Um, and then later we started to really use SAP globally. So our ambition was, and it started back in 2001, we did a little project. I started in 2000 at Bühler in the, in the <laughs> IT. There was a little um, project where we said, okay, in Utsmil we have uh, many departments doing spare and wear part business. You know, customers have plans and they need some spare parts. And those six departments, they all work completely differently. Mm -hmm. They had some PC solutions or even typewriters, so old fashioned. Wow. And I said, ah, let's transform them that they all work in the same way. Wow. And I was quite young and naive and it was easy, you know, to uh, draw the swim lanes. This is the way how you should work in the future. We uh, customized the system, SAP, obviously. We created all the data and we went live. And I learned on the hard way what it means to do change management because people <laughs> don't always just embrace changes no Definitely. usually they like to work in the way how they used to work but anyhow but um, that was story. a small crash though compared to maybe not having learned that in the actual yes, global rollout it was a crash course <laughs> but that was the starting point because our that time ceo said hey that was quite interesting you have standardized harmonized one process here in utsville and suddenly all the people know from each other how, how they should work. Yeah. Can we do this globally? And at that time, 2001, all Bühler affiliates, they had their own systems, their own processes. Oh, and we, create, we generate value for our customers together in a huge net, but they wow. did not talk the same language, right? Yes. And so that was the starting position. I went out to America, created the template, then across all over the world. And at the end, after many, many years, we had like one global template for all the wow. business process applications and data, not only SAP, but also others. And that helped us a lot because two years ago, we um, had this transformation to Esfahana and we did our homework in the past. So yes. we had globally standardized processes, data was okay. We made some changes in the processes, obviously. We did not only do just brownfield. Yeah. Um, and it was also nice, we did not want to migrate all the data. I mean, 98 yes. until 2022, this would have been a lot of Enough data. Enough data, yeah, for then, sure. Um, it was with the help of data migration with GIFs. We have then just historized a lot of data, yeah. but they have direct um, visibility in our new s platform. So the users can just look for data, which was 10 years ago or 15 years ago, and they don't even feel it. They go into the GIFs database and have all the all the insights. In their cockpit, yeah. So this is about the transformation to talk about s <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. You knew what I was alluding to, of course. And I think you're one of those exemplary cases that your transformation, the last one, was quite fast. I think you said 18 months yes. um, on the panel before. Yes. So I think that's uh, that's sort of really the goal for most companies, but that's not the norm. So was it really you learning from this long-standing relationship with SAP and the smaller transformations that you did, or was there some other secret ingredient? Um, maybe the main secret ingredients were we scoped it well, so we did not create like a huge monster of initiatives where we would have then to deal with too many risks, which is not deal um, doable, and we did not only do an IT project, we did like a business project. Mm -hmm. It was um, also 
um, steered and, and also approved by the on EB level. And even the, um, our board of directors had the visibility of that project because they knew if you do something wrong, then the operations of the, of the entire company globally would not work anymore. And no, no one wanted to have that. Um, we had very good partners with us. So we had Swisscom, we had um, data migration and some other partners. And from the beginning on, it was never that we said, okay, who is doing the job? Who is doing it better, finger pointing? No, it was one team. So, wow. And that's globally. So we had people also from Bühler, from Switzerland, from India and all over the world. And we worked and acted as one team. Um, one and a half years, I would not do it longer because in that time, the people from the business end, I have to focus so much. Mm -hmm. And all next to it, you cannot run any big innovations, innovations next to it. For sure. And, and the longer you drag on, you just freeze all your innovations. So the shorter you can make it with a digestible scope, make it done with a good team and then move on with your other innovations. Yeah. How did you approach the topic of data strategy? You told, you told us a little bit about how you historized uh, some of the data, you cleansed it and you, you have it available. But how do you think about data in general also for the innovation side of things at Bühler? Yeah. I mean, in the past data was more about um, understanding the business process operational data in finance, maybe in sales, maybe in inventory and, and, and manufacturing. And many of those data came out of SAP. But those times are a little bit gone, mm -hmm. where you steer the innovations from the data only from SAP. <laughs> so we have created now our new data strategy, which has also quite an overlap, certain overlap with the AI strategy. Because yes. AI without good, without good data is useless. Definitely. And, and I don't talk only about generative AI, I also talk about machine learning, deep yeah. learning, computer vision, all those things. So data strategy, what we do at Bühler, we always say our, um, our digitalization journey has five domains. One domain is all the, where, um, how do we do the whole infrastructure, enterprise architecture, where do we do what? So it, the, we answer there the question, how we do the things with which technology and architecture. Yes. Then we have business IT. So how do we make the business as efficient and effective as possible with the right processes, applications and data? Then we have uh, Bureau, we, have, we sell machines and plants and yeah. they have control, control systems. Yeah. And those are customer facing control systems. Our customers are touching our machines and those control systems. And this is also software. So we started to standardize that software as well because that not all the business units have different software and um, um, machine controls, but all in the same way. Because that data from the machines we use again with another customer facing um, um, digitalization with IoT. Yeah, the, the telemetry data and with that we gain some insights we give some insights back to our customers so they get more efficient yeah. but we also need to map it them back to our backend systems and with that we can generate value and those mm -hmm. this is our data strategy which data from which area where we have digitalization topics we need to connect to a data model to generate value and we just we don't want to just create a monster a huge data model yes. and no one is using it <laughs> We always do it by business cases, use cases where we can really profit. Yes. We do it, make it lean and incrementally then this data set is, um, or data models are, are growing. Last but not least, the fifth element I have not mentioned, all around we have a shield, oh. which is cybersecurity. Of so course. we need to protect our IT, but also every, all the digitalization towards our customers. Yes, naturally. And those are the five domains we having a focus for the digitalization topics. That's your own strategy house. <laughs> yes, that's our own strategy house. Um, but how do you do it from an organizational perspective? We were talking a lot about talent and mm -hmm. especially, of course, IT talent. What does your department look like and, and how do you handle that? What's your strategy there? We are kind of lucky that we can play that card globally. We're a global um, company. Um, we have some key positions still also in Switzerland where we define some strategies, some big concepts, architectures, um, business process, etc. But we have a very big footprint in India, Bühler mm -hmm. India, where we have in the meantime 180 people. Um, but we act as one team. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter that they are sitting in them. We have also some people in North and South America, some in China, and we develop. Um, so, of course, we also need to do operational work. There we act together, but also all the innovations. Yeah. We try to combine the strength as much as possible. 
but so you do emphasize also having core competencies in-house and not relying totally on outside consulting and partners. Absolutely. I mean, the make or buy decision is very important. I mean, you, a company, one always should think what are the core competences you should have in-house to make your company better and um, also having a competitive advantage. And what are the topics which are maybe commodity? Mm -hmm. And there you need to have a clear red, uh, drawing a red line, those, those um, um, special positions I have to fight for. It doesn't matter where they are in the world, <laughs> but they should be in-house. Okay. And this is what we have done. I mean, it's, and it's always changing. It's never, you cannot define it and it's, then it's lasting for five years. Of course. But you have to adapt to the newest technologies, innovations, and try to answer, to get the best out for your company. You have to be adaptive to the speed of change, right? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. So when we are looking ahead, and we'll be talking again in a year or two or three, what does Bühler's innovation pipeline look like? What I would dream of, um, one topic is very big currently globally, and I hope it remains big, is the topic of sustainability. Mm -hmm. I mean, all companies have several reasons to do something about sustainability. I mean, one thing is to do something for our children, for sure. Another topic is to have a good reputation as a company. I do something about sustainability. But then two more hard facts. One hard fact is the less energy you need in your production. I mean, Bula is creating plants mm -hmm. where you have production, where you need energy, water, and you also create like um, some um, um, parts what you don't need anymore. So though, if you can reduce that, you can save money. That goes directly into your, your bottom line bottom effect. Line. Mm -hmm. And the fourth reason is I hope this remains, the more you cannot prove about what you do about your footprint, CO2 equivalent footprint, you get sorted out of the value chain. Mm -hmm. And our customers, they want to be there also still in the future. So we help our customers Stay. to reduce their energy level, energy yeah. consumption, but we also do it for ourselves. Yeah. Now, why did I say this? That topic is really complex. Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure we can consult our customers much better if we have the data, we understand their processes, and then we c can run simulations. Is it AI, is it not AI? Having a lot of data um, dots from many customers, then we can consult our customers which variables they need to change to reduce the energy consumption. Yes. So this is one thing. Another big topic is, yes, everyone talks about AI and generative AI. Of course, I want to improve our internal um, efficiencies mm -hmm. with more or less about from the software um, suppliers their standard AI models. Is it generative AI or machine learning? Yeah. Gener or, so uh, customize it to, to your needs. But towards our customers, um, we also want to get better. Um, one example, I mean, currently our customers, they need to know the machines inside out and the whole plant. And those technicians, they need to go to the machine, set the right settings to make them the perfect product. Maybe in 10 or 20 years, mm -hmm. they will just prompt huh. to the machine or the line what they would like to have, and it's then self-adjusting. And that would be a good vision how we can also bring um, innovation power about AI to our customers. Wow, that sounds exciting. Thank you for, so much for sharing that, Vido. Vido Kappe, everybody. And I see you soon. <laughs>